You know, I feel like Alpha Team is an all too overlooked theme. It comes off as a little generic with its good guy versus bad guy and lots of vehicles approach, but there's a lot of things that this theme has going for it. Alpha Team was initially released in 2001 with the most generic of the three sub themes that it had. It was just good guy vehicles versus bad guy vehicles. 2002 took the theme underwater with Mission Deep Sea, a far more interesting approach which introduced far more attractive colors to each of the teams and had a better style overall. I think the theme peaked though in 2004 and 2005 with the release of the Mission Deep Free sets. In this adventure, the villain Ogle is trying to freeze the entire world with his ice orbs. And of course, the Alpha Team is the only team of heroes capable of stopping him. I've gathered up all the sets from the Mission Deep Freeze sub-theme from 2004 and 2005, so let's take a closer look at what we got here. The thing that's immediately going to stand out to you about this theme is the color scheme, which is predominantly sand blue for the good guys and dark red and black for the bad guys. Obviously all this, this cool blues really sell the ice frozen theme very well. 2004, mind you, is also the first year that the new light bluish gray was introduced. A cooler version of gray it fits the theme very well. It surprises me that nothing has really made use of this same color scheme. Agents from 2006, Sad. The Agents theme brought back the dark blue, but ditched the sand blue, kind of unfortunately. I think the sand blue here is really what makes this theme memorable. And it's where we get a ton of those unique pieces that I love to talk about way too much. Alpha Team gave us a total of eight sets across two years. Six sets in 2004 and two sets in 2005. And unfortunately, we never heard from Alpha Team ever again. They must have defeated Ogle forever. GG, boys. This was one of my first themes as a kid. That's why I have all the sets. These are all my childhood sets that I shared with my brother. And it was so awesome to bring these back for the first time in a very, very long time. A lot of good memories with these. The play feature that was stressed across all these sets is that the good guy vehicle could transform in some way. And sometimes that's a little more effective than others, as we'll see across these sets. Some vehicles just kind of open up, but some completely become something else. And I think a surprisingly good example of that is this set, the smallest of the wave, 4742 Chill Speeder, coming in at a grand total of 58 pieces. This set would have retailed for $4, adjusted for inflation. It's almost $6 today, so not too bad at all. Price per part is just about where you'd like it. Though a new sealed copy of this set is probably gonna cost you $25 today. Now, in terms of transformation, it's quite simple. These, which are typically sled blades become feet for a walker. The controller unfortunately becomes a little bit useless, but a pretty, pretty drastic transformation from a sled to a mini robot, and that's pretty cool. So for accessories, you'll have noticed this piece perhaps, which is quite interesting. That's a magnifying glass in red. And so the purpose of that is to investigate things like this ice harp, which have red printing on it. So if you remove the red, you can see there's a beetle right there. This only comes in three sets, all of which are Mission Deep free sets, of course. The minifigure is Flex. He's included in two sets altogether, and his inclusion in the smallest set makes him a relatively inexpensive figure to get. There's a few exclusive parts on this set though that are worth mentioning. This bracket in sand blue only appears in this set. The handle in sand blue only appears in four sets. The one by two in dark blue here with the bars on the side, exclusive to this set. And this dark blue ray gun sort of piece is also exclusive to this set, along with these printed pieces, exclusive to this set. So for a set with 58 pieces, that's a lot of exclusive pieces, so. Very noteworthy in that respect. Spoiler alert, but this might be my favorite Alpha Team set. And that's pretty surprising when it clocks in at the second smallest of the way. So this is 4743 Ice Blade, has 108 pieces, retailed for $10 back in the day, adjusted for inflation, it's pushing 15 here in 2022. Okay, according according to my, my notes, you can pick up a sealed copy of this 
uh, for $20. Um, I, I did this a while ago. I'm genuinely curious if this is still the case. Oh my gosh, sure enough. I, I, I just went on BrickLink and there are two sealed copies of this set from 2004 uh, that you can get for less than $20. This set, as it starts out anyway, is another uh, sled-like thing, something we'll be seeing a lot of. So we can see some actually Bionicle parts uh, repurposed here. The blade on the front is only included in two sets. And this saw in the back is exclusive to this set in this color. It was released in one Bionicle set in pearl gray. And I mean, while we're on the topic of pieces, I might as well talk about all these. This 16 by four piece in sand blue, exclusive to the set. That is a sticker, not a print on it, um, which is surprising as most of the stuff in this first wave of Alpha Team sets is typically prints. This piece here in dark blue, exclusive to this set. These engine pieces in dark blue, exclusive to this set, there are two of them. The dark blue bracket that attaches them, you can kind of see what's going on there. That piece isn't used too much anymore, uh, but that also is exclusive to this set. Our figure for this time around is Charge. So Charge is included in two sets altogether. He has the red color scheme. I do really enjoy the printing on this figure, the metallic, no alternate face for any of these guys. I do like the, the unconventional style here with the different color arms. It, it's unique. On the inside, you can see that there is one of those printed computer screens that'll show up in a number of other sets. It's a solid print. Windscreen is printed as well. You can see mine's a little scratched up because it was well loved. Now, the reason this set is my favorite though is not because of its really cool parts. What's really cool here is the transforming function, which is incredibly successful, especially compared to some of the later sets. This thing is gonna turn into a helicopter and it's gonna look like a good helicopter. Don't believe me? Uh, let's watch. Look at it, that, that is incredible. Yeah, my, my mind is blown by this thing. It's really, really effective use of not that many parts. Definitely the strongest transformation of the theme and therefore, in my opinion, probably the most successful, successful set of Mission Deep Freeze. And to reverse that real fast, so you can see this piece actually will lock that turntable in place. <laughs> I don't know, I think that's incredible. So no villain included in this set, just the ice orb, but what more could you ask for? That is really cool. I hope some of you guys are just as amazed as I am by what just happened here. So awesome. Continuing on up the list, we've got 4744 Tundra Tracker. So this set has 141 pieces, retailed for $20 back in 2004, adjusted for inflation, looking at more 30. Uh, this is our first set to include multiple figures. We get two diamond. If I'm not mistaken, diamond is exclusive to the set. So diamond is our green guy. That leg print is reused on a couple guys. Uh, we also get a side build with this. That's where our other figure is hiding, frozen away. And that's Radia. She comes in two sets. As you can see, that leg print is reused there. Same torso print also as Diamond, uh, but we get the purple arm. And she's got just a regular baseball cap for some reason. And hey, that's all right. In terms of transformation, this one's kind of weak. It doesn't really become anything else. Instead, it becomes bigger. So this whole thing folds up. And you can see that there is this controllable drill. The idea, of course, is that you want to free Radia, who's been frozen by the ice orb. So on the side of this, you'll notice that there's convenient holes to stick the drill in and splice it apart. Okay, I just thought <laughs> that is a stud in a Technic pinhole. And if I'm not mistaken, that is declared by Lego to be an illegal technique. And it is used twice in this set. Wow, that is cursed. I love it. Regardless, it makes these sections really easy to split. Dude, that's illegal. Wow, crazy. Definitely, I've never done that in a mock before. Anyway, on the side, you'll notice these stickered elements. And strangely enough, there is no way to decode it in the set other than, you guessed it, the windscreen. Some of the other sets include the red magnifying glass, which is a little more convenient. You can see that there's a bug hidden in there and 
It's a drill. So this is kind of a fun little play feature. Those are stickers again. Everything else you see here is actually printed. So you get these really nice prints on two sides. All those bricks, they're all identical. Uh, two by two print up here. The windscreen again is printed. Uh, I think I think that's all that's noteworthy. Just to show you from the back, this is another rare piece. I think it only comes in one other set and we've seen that before on this channel and that is AeroTube Hanger actually. So I forgot to highlight the white pin here. Believe it or not, this is actually only included in two sets, both of which are Alpha Team Mission Deep Freeze. This thing goes for about a dollar used. A Technic pin usually can't give these things away, but in white, uh, quite valuable. These two by three wedges in sand blue only come in two sets, this being one of them. And that two by two tile only comes in one other set as well. Even though this set is not as impressive on its own, I think this is still a pretty good looking vehicle. The feature is actually pretty fun, even if that transformation isn't all that amazing. The fact that you're able to move this up and down and kind of control the vehicle from there, I think is very effective. So far, these small sets are off to a great start. This next set finally, finally, finally gives us a villain besides the ice horn. This is set number 4745, Blue Eagle versus Snowcrawler. Has a total of 258 pieces, retailed for $30 back in 2004, adjusted for inflation. That's pushing 45 today in 2022. So we've got two minifigures, two vehicles. Um, let's start out with the Alpha Team vehicle, Blue Eagle. We're gonna save. We're gonna save the best for last here. Now this is a very respectable vehicle. I, I mean, no shame when I say saving the best for last. For our minifigure, we've got Dash. He's got the blue color scheme quite the expression on his face. And I believe this is the character with the nightmare fuel uh, talking, yeah, that. So in the set, he fits pretty snugly into the cockpit here. We've got another one of these wonderful printed console pieces and that closes right on top. This is the other two by two printed tile. These are also prints, uh, though on the side of the cockpit, <laughs> those are stickers that you can see from the aerial shot there. Uh, appealing a little bit, uh, it, it's well loved, what can I say? So this actually does have a bit of transformation going for it, which is super exciting. The wings can bend in and the neck of the craft can bend down and it becomes, believe it or not, yet another sled-like vehicle. Uh, the skates here in sand blue are definitely exclusive to this set. There is another play feature here, uh, which you might have noticed with this knob here, which is pretty cool. And that ties us back into the snow crawler. So the snow crawler has this sticky uppy bit, if you will. And basically pushing this back activates the claw, right? And so if you time it up just right, you can pull it off and decapitate the bug by, by yoinking that. So you can see that the connection there is just a simple Technic pinhole, but you've effectively disabled that vehicle. I've got to tell you, that's a pretty fun, pretty fun feature. It's accomplished using a rubber band back there uh, that helps it lock into place. So that's pretty cool. Really, really sweet vehicle. I do wish we would have gotten more. It's following up on what insectoids could have been, you know? Obviously there's a lot of inspiration drawn from that theme. Also, seen within the Ogle minion figure, the first one. <laughs> Finally, we're getting one, we'll see plenty more throughout this sub theme. He uses that insectoid's helmet, recolored in trans medium blue with that terrifying skull underneath. He's actually very similar to the previous iterations of the Ogle minion, but I think this is the best one. The vehicle itself is very insect-like. We get the, the leg piece back here in black, which is really cool to see used to great effect. The feet for the insect are awesome, uh, using that bionicle eye in trans medium blue. We've got a printed one by two tile up here. Yes, that's a print. That's included in one other set. We got the, the bad guy console here, uh, two by two tile. These windscreens in dark red, exclusive to the set. This is all a print, which is really, really funky, really overkill, honestly, for this set. Awesome stuff all around. Uh, I love the design of this thing. The, the legs do move back and forth. They don't move up or down or anything, uh, but you do get some movement in the wings. The claw moves up and down. You hold the wiggle there, this moves up and down. Great stuff. So this does move up to get out of the way for the feature of the set. So you can plop an ice orb back there and using this little lever here, flies out. This is a really good set. Transformation, little weak, bad guy stuff, really, really strong. Let's take a look at the next set. All right, this set finally has enough figures to justify bringing out the stand. It's also got two ice orbs, side build, but we all came here for 
the main feature, which is the mobile command center. Yes, this is set number 4746 mobile command center. 426 pieces we're looking at here, retailing for $50, adjusted for inflation, almost 75. Yeah, we're getting to the big boys now. Let's take a look at the minifigures first. We've got Charge again, who we've seen. We've got Arrow. First time we're seeing him in the lineup. He's got quite the interesting face print there with a, a futuristic monocle. Radia again makes appearance. And the biggest disappointment, perhaps of this entire sub-theme, the Alpha Team Android. Now, this guy is a replacement for TV. TV who had so much life and imagination and fun. Now we get this. Like, don't get me wrong, the prints are cool. It's fun to get a turquoise arm, probably the last appearance of turquoise until it was rebooted just a few years ago. And yes, mine's terribly chewed up. I'm sorry about that. Compare this to what we got in Mission Deep Sea. It's a bit of a letdown. Makes me sad for all the things they could have done to make it give us a cute little side character. And we, we get this guy. I don't know. And thankfully we get another Ogle Minion in this set. So that's our figure lineup. Two ice orbs is great. So we do get a side build in this set. Much like Tundra Tracker, it's a place to freeze a minifigure. I didn't draw enough attention to these pieces. They're really cool. Uh, so we get the the dual plastic in there, a mix of white with the transmedium blue. It's a really, really cool effect. I'll be totally honest with you. I don't really care for this. The transformation function is kind of lame. Maybe it's just because we're spoiled with a lot of these HQ sets kind of in the city. You get a lot of the police uh, transforming headquarters. The function of this set to spit out these doesn't really work all that well. And I don't think it looks as good as some of the other vehicles. It's so blocky when we've gotten all sorts of these really nice rounded edges in the past. And I know it kind of has to be that way, but they could have done something. It's, it's definitely a mixed bag. This is a surprise, probably no one. Opening this thing up reveals the base. That's pretty much the extent of the transformation. The backbone of this vehicle becomes a crane uh, from which you can safely lift the ice orbs. Also note that the red magnifying glass is making an appearance here, which is a welcome addition for sure. The inside itself, there's plenty of space in here, which I do appreciate. We got a few interesting things. We've got some telephone prints here. There's two of them. The familiar two by two print. Both sides of the walls feature some prints and also just exposed studs for some reason. Yeah, and there's various tools and things all around. The set does include one action feature as well. It's that you can get two sleds to split off from the main vehicle by trying to hit these very obnoxiously placed actuators. They're way underneath the front. It's finicky at best, but I do like the two sleds that you get sticker on the front and each has room for a minifigure and maybe if you get creative, a few more. <laughs> so we got a cannon, of course. Let's see if I can hit the lens. That is okay. And uh, up in the front, you do get another printed console piece and there's room for one figure in there. For the price of this thing, I, I wish it could be something more. They could have really gone all out on making this transform into something amazing. Not just a box, a big blue box that opens up and two little sleds, which are cute by the way, that pop out. It's fine. It's fine for what it is. It's stable. It's, it's bulky. It feels like a mobile HQ, but I would have loved to have seen a proper base instead of this or a better vehicle that transformed. So this is the flagship set of the wave. Ogles Mountain Fortress. Might as well start with the facts of this set. Uh, so this is set number 4748, Ogles Mountain Fortress. 436 pieces. Largest set, yes. So retailed for $70, adjusted for inflation, that's 102. So yeah, 430 some pieces for $100. Uh, not pretty, but you gotta remember, there, there's some cool things going on here. A lot of big pieces, first of all, including the specialized base plate, of course, exclusive to the set. That base plate is cool. However, what Lego put on top of it isn't quite it. There have been three sub-themes of Alpha Team, right? And all of them have had Ogle's base. And the first one was whatever, it, it's fine. I really like the second underwater base though. And I, you wanna see great things from this one. And I think the angle you're looking at it now, it's fine. But 
as soon as I rotate this thing, you, you realize the problem. You have paid $100 for a wall. A, a wall. That That is what this is. It is a cool looking wall. There's not a lot of substance to the set. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about these figures because there are some wins going on here. We get some familiar faces. Dash, Arrow, Ogle Minion. This Ogle Minion actually has a buzzsaw in Transmedium Blue, which is awesome. There are actually two more of those buzzsaws included in this set. We'll get to that very, very soon. And we get Ogle himself. So Ogle is almost exactly the same as he appeared in the last sub-theme, Mission D Freeze. The only difference is that he has that Transmedium Blue hook exclusive to this set. Quite a valuable part because of it. Simple as he is, there's no printing on the legs or torso. I think he looks great. So there's two vehicles, Ogle's insect-like thing, and I love that they really embrace the, the insect theme. The other two saw blades are used here. They're easy enough to take off and give to figures. I prefer to have an army of those guys holding them. A little propeller on the back, but the idea is that this is Ogle's personal ship. He can sit in there if there's a control panel, you know. Really simple also for the Alpha Team, transformation time, right? Uh, th this one can bend, and that's, that's about the extent to which it can bend. The idea is that you can shoot off this uh, cannon in the back, right? Um, and there's actually a play feature. Uh, we can try to make it work. So first of all, the lever that you have to press is on the inside, so you have to open the canopy. And then what you want to do is aim for this. And there's supposed to be a sticker there. Um, Ta-da, sticker. I gotta come in front to do this. Right, let's go. That was a great shot. Obviously it didn't work. But what's supposed to happen is you hit that and that allows that to pop up. Get everything real, real loose. Round two. Okay, you just gotta loosen things up beforehand, but you can't get it to work, so. I, I shouldn't have given that as much crap as I did. And that's how you break in to Ogle's Mountain Fortress. I know what you're asking, what's on the inside that's worth breaking into? We're gonna take a look later because I almost forgot to mention the coolest part of this set, besides the base plate perhaps, which is the fact that you get four of these little ice rock pieces on top of two eight by eight transmedium blue plates, which are probably worth about $5 a piece, maybe even more. Really great for ice scenes. Uh, they sit right above these pits. Uh, so if I tip this forward, hopefully nothing will fall out, but you can see there's actually pits in there and there's actually printing on the inside, which is really cool. Uh, speaking of printing, you can see the printing on the road there, which is just really good. It's awesome. I, lo I love the color scheme. Just having this frozen world is really unique and special. Okay, now we can go to the inside. The inside, woo! Uh, we've got a crane making use again of those Bionco claws. It can pick up and move ice orbs around and there's a number of places that they can go. I don't know what this is. I have always viewed it as like Ogle's meditation chamber. It's like this slightly lowered pit in the ground. There's really no good way to show it. It's like his throne. He sits down there and broods. Cool, I guess. Uh, it exists. Right up here is maybe a place where we'd want to plop an ice orb to study it. I don't know why these guys are studying it. Ogle made them after all, but there is a, a magnifying glass that you can look out on it. This is just graded off. That basically serves as a landing pad for the flyer. Otherwise, not too much going on down here. There are some stations that can be removed. This one is the other set that includes the one by two print there. It's got the inside of an ice orb, like they're kind of creating one. That just loosely slides into the back of the, the burp, the big ugly rock piece. Oh, I almost forgot. There's actually something quite charming on this. It's this sinister, evil looking two by two computer screen there, coupled with this old school QWERTY keyboard print. That's good stuff. You gotta love that. Uh, this might have been one of the last uses of that specific print before they got a little more modern one. Uh, bear in mind, this is 2004, so it's probably still pretty accurate. These can also be swapped around. One could go up here, for example. Second floor. Um, well, there's there's nothing there's nothing there. Yeah, that's that's it. We do have these catapults up front for launching. Ice orbs, oh, dropping them more accurately. Flagship set, 
It's just, it's just a wall. It looks cool. It's a, I, I like the skull look that they were trying to bring back. I don't know. There's just so much that could have been done with this raised base plate. There had to be something more than this. However, I, I do like the pieces that are here. There's a number of ones that are remarkable. So these flame pieces in black that are used for the gate are actually exclusive to the set. Makes them a little hard to come by. I was actually missing all of them, I'm pretty sure. I gave them to a friend who liked Bionicle, uh, thinking I would never use them again, but I had to pick them up. This dark red fence barrier piece is also exclusive to the set. There's three of them. There's one included in the interior as well. Thick with two C's handle. Here's a note I left to myself about a rare piece. Thick with two C's handle. What would be a thick handle? Thick handle. What? Both of the antenna included in this set, the, the shorter one and the taller one, are exclusive to this set in transmedium blue. So you get two of the tall one and you get four of this one, which is pretty cool. They make really fun icicles. Yes, overall, this is a very, very mixed bag. We've got a lot of cool parts, but it just comes together to create that. And when they put this on the box art, you know, it looks really intimidating and really cool. But then when you realize that's it, you saw the entire set from the front. There's really nothing that it's offering back here. It does seem like as we got larger sets, the quality went down. If only there was another wave to this sub theme that could restart things for them. And introducing wave two of Mission Deep Freeze. So starting off, we've got set number 4774, Scorpion Orb Launcher. And believe it or not, all of this would have retailed for $20 in 2004, even adjusted for inflation. What, that's about 30? It's not all that crazy. Big substantial set, seems like things are off to a good start. Following kind of the insect theme, we've got a scorpion this time around. But I'll let it slide, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. We've got, we've got a good guy vehicle too. Not a lot of transforming happening here. It is simply a glider, but there's still some notable elements here in that this four long bar in sand blue is exclusive to this set. Quite a rare piece, really funny. Also exclusive are the battle droid arms as well. 17 parts? <laughs> and four of those pieces uh, are not included in any other sets. So dangling below there is Flex. He's got some skis. We've seen him before in the smallest set. We got onto the Scorpion Orb Launcher itself. So I need to highlight the figure here because that is an exclusive figure. It's a super ice drone. It is the, the next evolution of Ogle Minion. He features a unique torso print and a unique skull headpiece in black. Would have been really awesome to have gotten more of these if the theme had continued on, but unfortunately there were only two sets released in the second wave and that was it. He does go for a fair amount on the aftermarket but because he's cool. So his cockpit is also quite fancy. It features these two transmedium blue windscreen. It's also exclusive to the set and then a larger glass piece over the top. I, I really like all the glass, the visibility going on there. It's really nice. We've got grabbers up front. These, of course, can grab more ice orbs. We've got six posable legs, which is awesome. In the back, also this piece is also exclusive. Very cool. We have room for two ice orbs. And this is the Scorpion Orb Launcher. So it does what you might expect. There's a rubber band attached here. Really dangerous for a Lego set. Like, that could actually cause some damage. That's hard plastic flying at your face. I love it. I'm all for it. It's not those soft rubber things. You get more velocity, harder plastic, great stuff. Love to see it. It's a simple set, you know, at the end of the day. But it's nice to still see more of those exclusive pieces. There's just not as many prints um, in this set as the other sets had. It's just that two by two tile. But the bad guy vehicles are epic and so it's really nice to get another one and that brings us to our last set 4770 blizzard blaster total of 303 pieces here retailed for 30 dollars adjusted for inflation again that's more like 45. we've got two minifigures in this set we've got a regular ogle minion not one of the elite ice drones and then we have zed and if you're like me you're probably wondering who the heck is zed this is zed's first appearance and surprisingly 
according to the Leo Club magazine at least, he becomes the hero of this entire chapter of the Alpha Team saga. He and the Blizzard Blaster are unable to be frozen by ice orbs, and while the rest of the Alpha Team gets frozen, Zed is perfectly fine and is able to rescue everybody, and they defeat Ogle once and for all. I mean, I mean to be totally honest, that's a pretty lame story that this rando guy who doesn't even look like the rest of the Alpha Team. I mean, note that he doesn't have like that unique arm color. There's no unique color that's associated with his vehicle. He's just very generic. And even though the prints are interesting at best, like I don't see why they couldn't have just either made this figure a lot cooler like they did with the Elite Ice Drown from the last one or just given us an existing character to be the hero. It's a little to no consequence, but it made me upsetty spaghetti. So I thought I would tell you that it did so. All that being said, I, I do like this set. I mean, for $30, it feels pretty substantial uh, for something in the day. Both of these last two sets uh, feel good. Even for 45 today, it's not not bad. We'll take a look at the this little guy first. Love this vehicle. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't get a lot of bad guy stuff. This this is great for all, you know, 15 pieces that it is capable of holding an ice orb. Claw in front is actually quite rare and only is included in this set. And there was two of them in Scorpion Orb Launcher. It's fun to see the Bionicle pieces repurposed here. Literally no opposability whatsoever. What you see is what you get, but it's still functional. And then I can hold that ice orb. The Blizzard Blaster itself, I think, is quite impressive. I, I like this design. It's very imposing. I can hardly imagine that this is practical, but I like the look. There's a lot of sand blue and a lot of dark blue pieces on this set, a lot of which are actually quite rare. There is a transforming element here. It's probably exactly what you would expect it to be. It turns into a sled! There you go, much more low profile sled-like vehicle. I do really enjoy all the orange elements on this too. The colors are really great. What you see on the side here are stickers, not prints, which is unusual because they had printed these in the first wave. Uh, this still is a print of the cockpit piece, but there's actually no printed console piece on the inside, which is quite unusual, since even Scorpion Orb Launcher uh, had a printed console piece. So, who knows? But that's all for this one. Let's take a look at everybody back together. Alpha Team is by no means a perfect theme, but despite its flaws, there's a lot to appreciate here. As a special agent sort of theme, it's easy to get this lost perhaps in the sea of the many similar themes LEGO has done in the past, but where this one really stands out and excels is with a really strong, distinct, and consistent style. Sand blue, frozen landscapes, the villains are distinct with their different color scheme, and I love that it's maintained very consistently throughout. The graphics work on the stickers and the prints is really awesome. The gimmick of this theme, the transformations, don't always work as great as you'd like them to, but it's honestly something that LEGO doesn't do enough of. Yes, we see like vehicles coming apart, like these sleds and things like that in modern sets, but not sleds becoming helicopters. <laughs> This is a theme designed very much for play for kids. There, there is a world here, a story to be told here. There's elements of collectability with getting all the characters, getting as many ice orbs as you can. There's so much consistency. These are all clearly part of the same world. It's ridiculous and fun. It doesn't feel, even though some of these things are terrifying, the villains are terrifying, it still feels very cartoony and I love that. Of course, I'm partial to this theme too, as it was quite literally one of my first themes. I'm glad this was a part of my life, a part of my early LEGO experience. It was very enjoyable for me to bring these back. And, and if you really like it, like these things are pretty cheap. They're, they're easy enough to find. I totally recommend the new sealed copy of this thing for dirt cheap because you will get quite a bit of enjoyment out of that, I think. That's all I've got to say about Alpha Team Mission Deep Freeze. In my opinion, it is the best of the three Alpha Team subthemes. I like some of the concept of Mission Deep Sea and some of the execution of maybe the, the, the designs of the sets themselves, but the, the feel of this is awesome. I'd love to return to an ice world, again, with uh, new updated pieces and such. But I'd love to hear what you have to say about Alpha Team 
Mission Deep Freeze or the Alpha Team theme as a whole. Do you have any of these sets? And will you be picking this up? I definitely want to hear, especially if you get a new sealed copy. Honestly, still, still debating that myself. I think I'd have a lot of fun cracking open a new one of those. I'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching.